Good morning. Welcome as we continue our Easter celebration. It's uh, good together as a body of believers as we fix our eyes on Christ Jesus. If you're visiting with us today, please, uh, if you could, fill out one of our visitation cards that we can acknowledge your visit with us. We're always uh, grateful when uh, people are able to visit with us and connect with our family of God here in Moton with the realization that we're all part of the universal church. Uh, it's not defined by a building, but God building people throughout the world. And so for that, uh, we give him praise. A uh, few announcements. We had a dinner church last night. We had 37 for dinner church. Uh, I think we had about five or six children that came out. So it's always a, a blessing to, uh, to connect uh, with uh, people in the community. Uh, we give them a nice hot meal. It was a, a nutritious meal with wonderful desserts. Uh, great time of fellowship and an opportunity to share the word of God. And so very, very grateful for that. Um, we have a governing board meeting uh, to uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. We actually have a missions committee meeting uh, today right after the service. And for those of you that are part of the mission committee, uh, stay tuned for that. Um, on Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30, we have our Fun and Faith Kids Club. And uh, on Thursday night, we have our, our 7 p.m. Bible study. We're in Genesis 7. That is a Zoom study. If you are interested and you would like a link to that, let me know. I'd be happy to send you a link. Uh, the altar flowers are presented to the glory of God in memory of uh, Elsie Langle and Ruth uh, Philippi by Jim and Becky Philippi. And the rosebud and the bulletin are presented to the glory of God in honor of Ethan Brendel's 16th birthday today by Rosalie and Martin Redkay. He's 16 already. It's hard to imagine that. But uh, happy birthday, Ethan. Boy, time goes by quick, doesn't it? It's amazing. Uh, our usher today is Glenn Worley. Our greeters are Marsha and Doug Sewell. And uh, a thank you to everyone that uh, contributed to our Ukraine uh, relief fund. We raised uh, $2,510. That is uh, filtered through Ken Sears, our missionary to Ukraine, for 37 years. And that is going to go to those that uh, have the most need. And, and certainly we need to continue to pray. Uh, just terrible atrocities are being uh, committed in the Ukraine. Uh, war crimes, really. And um, we, we pray for a swift end to that and uh, for God to supply uh, the needs, the heads of protection. And it's just heart-wrenching to, to see the innocent lives that are being uh, displaced and, and murdered uh, through this, this terrible uh, thing, a needless, a needless war. Uh, also, today we have newsletters available. Make sure you take your newsletter with you today. And uh, you will have that when you leave. And with that, I will turn over the call to worship and prayer of confession and pardon to Doug Sewell. Call to worship this morning is adapted from Psalm 30. You have turned our mourning into dancing. You have taken away our funeral clothes and reclothed us in joy, so that our whole being, body, mind, and soul, might sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord, our Lord, we will give thanks to you forever. Amen. Lord, like the women at the tomb on the first Easter, we come out of darkness and into your light. We come out of emptiness to enter your fullness. We come out of hopelessness to find your joy. We come out of confusion to seek your peace. We come far from home because we know we have been found. We come at your invitation to celebrate your risen life and to praise you as Lord. Let us pray. Father God, as we gather this morning, as we continue our Easter celebration that leads up to Pentecost, the, the birth of the church, may we continue to keep our eyes fixed on Christ Jesus. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we might have an extra measure of your presence, that we might be transformed and revived and equipped to go out into the world this week to be salt and light as we strive to reach men and women, boys and girls with the love and grace of Jesus. It's in his precious name that we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn today is hymn number 648, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, in your red hymnal, 648. Excelling joy of heaven to earth come down, fixing us thy humble dwelling, 
All thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art our compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. Breathe, oh, breathe thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit, let us find the promised rest. Take away our pen to sinning, Alpha and Omega B. its beginning, set our hearts at liberty. Come, Almighty, to deliver, let us all thy life receive. Suddenly return and never, never more thy temples leave. Always blessing, serve thee as thy hosts above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing, glory in thy perfect love. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. Amen. You may be seated. Hymns really touch us in amazing ways. They can lift our spirits. They can connect us with precious memories. And we thank God that we can sing praises to Him. And uh, we have that wonderful privilege each and every week that we come together as the church to worship. Uh, very grateful for uh, answered prayer. Uh, I know that, that God uh, meets us in our time of need, that he uh, gives us all that we need, and uh, we're thankful for those that faithfully give time, talent, and treasure. Uh, it, just being able to, to raise the money for the people in Ukraine that we did was uh, above and beyond the normal giving, and so we, we thank God for your faithfulness. We uh, greatly appreciate those that uh, connect with us as a local church as we uh, join the Church Universal to make a difference in the world around us as we uh, strive to reach men and women, boys and girls with the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we, uh, we thank you uh, for those that give uh, their time and their talents and their offerings, uh, that your kingdom may grow, that the name of Jesus might go far and wide in the, the world around us. And so, Father, we pray that you bless the gift and the giver as we continue to lift up the name of Jesus to a world that's lost in sin, to a people in desperate need of a Savior, it's in our Savior's precious name that we pray. Amen.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. may be seated. We're going to sing one of my favorite hymns today, uh, Because He Lives, uh, 358 in the hymnal, and uh, it will be our praise hymn for the day. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face on certain days. Because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future. Worth the living just because he lives. And then one day I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's final war with pain, and then as death. His way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, and I'll know He reigns, because He lives. I can face tomorrow, because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He lives Amen. Life is worth the living because He lives And all fear is gone. We don't have to live in fear. We can keep our focus on Christ Jesus, and we can know that no matter what we face, that he's with us every step of the way, and for that we give him praise. I absolutely love the Easter celebration, a reminder of the depth of God's love for us in Christ, and we have much to celebrate. 
You know, I, I'm convinced that there are so many people that don't know what to do or where to turn. They are bound by fear. Uh, they hide themselves away. They're trying to escape a world that is spiraling out of control when there is help right there for them. All they have to do is reach out and receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so we thank God that uh, he is still transforming lives through his son each and every day, each generation. There are those that have the good sense uh, to fix their eyes on Jesus, to receive him as their Lord and Savior, that they might be able to navigate this sinful, uh, fallen world in which we live. Right? In Sunday school, we were talking about the, uh, the Black Plague and uh, how so many people died and people were desperate. They didn't know what to do. And uh, as it was my hope uh, during this pandemic that it would be a catalyst to draw people closer to God. I'm not sure if that happened or not. Uh, but I know one thing for sure is uh, as long as we think that we can solve a problem on our own, uh, many people uh, put God on a back burner until they're absolutely desperate. And so it's my prayer that God would indeed put things in our pathway that we would be desperate for him, that we would seek him, love him, and proclaim him. And so we, we pray today for the needs among us as a church. We have a prayer list, really just the beginning of uh, things that you can begin to and, and pray for. Uh, uh, Cindy uh, Smith-Kern was here last Sunday for Easter. She's still in a lot of pain. She had her, her second knee replaced in about uh, six or 12 weeks, I think it was, and, and she's on a timetable to be at the ocean in a month or two, I think, and still suffering a lot of pain. But I, I admire uh, her tenaciousness to, uh, to attack this thing head on. Uh, Sandy Lenhart, we want to pray for. Uh, she and Phil were here last week. Uh, Phil actually came in contact with uh, somebody that has COVID, so he's being quarantined for the next 10 days. He uh, has tested negative for it, so we uh, praise God for that. We continue to pray for uh, Phil Leonard Sr., uh, who is back home now with uh, Sandy, his wife, and I understand uh, it's been a difficult time for, for the family as uh, he, they go through this as they continue to trust God for uh, his healing and hope. Uh, we pray for John and Myrtle Ragsdale, for Deb Anizuski, for Lynn Campbell, Kristen Lewis, uh, we pray for. I understand she has COVID at the moment. And uh, while the numbers are coming down, we, we see that it's still impacting people uh, uh, among us. But uh, like I said, I, I believe firmly that God is bigger than all of this. And uh, we continue to trust that he's going to give us all that we need as we fix our eyes on him. We had uh, Ben and Joy Heckman with us on Sunday uh, last week for Easter. So it was a joy to, to see them and uh, very grateful to all uh, that they uh, meant to us. I'm, I'm sorry they live uh, so far away now. I was able to visit with Larry and Linda Wolfgang this week. Uh, as you know, Larry has been in hospital slash nursing care for going on four months now. Uh, he did seem like he was doing a little bit better, so that's a real praise. Uh, we continue to uh, to pray for him and and Linda, and uh, we just uh, we thank God that uh, God does meet our needs. But sometimes it's it's hard, isn't it? We pray and. We want a quick answer to our prayers, and sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Uh, we have to trust God that his timing is perfect and that his plan uh, is the, the plan that we need to, to submit our lives to. But I know that when we uh, are going through insurmountable difficulties at times, it, we don't know what to do, but we know uh, the one that we can trust. And so that's all that we can do. And I tell you what, that's all we need to do. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we uh, come together today and we uh, thank you uh, for your son Jesus who has taken away the sin of the world. He's given us uh, victory over sin and death. He's given us the right to be called your children and we've gained all the rights and privileges of heaven one day. And so we celebrate this Easter blessing that is ours in Christ. We pray, Father, for those that are on our prayer list, those that are upon our hearts and minds. We pray that you would bring healing and hope to each person that seeks you, that you would uh, meet our needs as only you can. Uh, you know our needs even before we ask. We do pray for healing of body, mind, and spirit, and a greater desire to, to know you more, to love you more, and to proclaim you in a lost and hurting world. And so, Father, be with us today. I pray, Father, for those that are struggling financial difficulties, 
families and, and those that are, are having family issues, those that are, are struggling with sin, and for those that don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, we lift them into your care. We pray that today would be the day that they would receive Jesus, that they would find life and life abundant. We pray, Father, for the people in Ukraine for your provision, for your protection, and your presence. We, we thank you, Father, that no matter what we face, that you're always with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. And that through your Son, you bring healing and hope. We pray, Father, for those in hospital and nursing care. Uh, we pray for Ken and Evelyn Reed and for Stosh Redkay for our, our shut-ins. We pray for Scott Hewitt and Miriam Kern and Joyce Organtini and Phyllis Brace. We Pray, Father, for our missionaries and the missions that we support throughout the world. We, we thank you that we each play a part in uh, growing your kingdom. We pray that you would surround these ministries in your protection, that you would use them mightily for your kingdom and continue to mold us and shape us into the people that you long for us to be. Let us pray as Jesus taught the disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I, uh, I love Christmas. It is probably the, my favorite holiday in the church because it reminds me that God sent his son from the throne room of heaven into this sinful dark world to put on flesh and to, to grow and, and to be all that the father called him to. But without Christmas, we couldn't have Easter. And so I celebrate that we have a savior has overcome the world. And we continue this Easter celebration today as we lead into Pentecost. Uh, we know that uh, Jesus would, uh, after the first resurrection Sunday, he would be among us for 40 days. Over 500 people would see the resurrected Lord. And 10 days after he ascended back to heaven, the birth of the church takes place at Pentecost. And so we uh, celebrate that. Uh, we need these seasons throughout the church here to remind us uh, all that is ours in Christ Jesus. Uh, we need to, uh, to be reminded that, uh, you know, that no matter what we're facing, that it isn't impossible for God, that he's with us, and, and we need a season of Lent as a time of reflection, a, a time of prayer, a time of putting aside sins, and then we come together for the Easter celebration. Uh, same thing in Advent as we prepare for Christmas. Uh, we, each of the seasons throughout the church year are designed to keep us focused and fixed on Christ because it's because of him uh, that we have all that we have and uh, we have a lot to give uh, God thanks for. Could I have uh, somebody offer a prayer for the message today, please? Amen. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. You know, Thomas gets a bad rap, I think. You know, the Doubting Thomas. Uh, how would you like to have that uh, title? You know, Doubting Bob Shuey. Uh, and, and the truth of the matter is, if we're honest, we're all doubters. Uh, we all have those moments of doubt and fear. And, you know, I've always admired the, the sincere uh, prayer request of the honest man who G comes to Jesus to have his son healed. And, and, and he says, if you can. And Jesus says, what do you mean, if I can? He says, well, do you believe? And he goes, oh, yes, I believe, but help my unbelief. And, and, and that's the reality of who we are. Because we do vacillate from moments of greatness to times of fear and doubt and frustration. And so we probably shouldn't be too hard on Thomas. And uh, so let's take a look at this today. Uh, and the, the message is, have you seen the Lord? And uh, there is one race of people in the world, the human race. But there's two types of people. Those that believe and those that do not. 
And unfortunately, Jesus said, you know, wide is the road that leads to destruction and narrow is the path that leads to eternal life and only some will find it. So evidently, that, that the wide road is filled with unbelievers. And uh, we need to be careful for those that do profess Jesus as Savior and Lord that we're not getting so focused on the world around us that we begin to be filled with fear and doubt as well. Well, for Christians, Easter is not just one day. Uh, it's a season of 50 days, a, a week of weeks. It's derived its length from the 50 days between Passover and Pentecost, which actually means 50th. And in Judaism, the Easter season begins at sunset on the eve of Easter and ends with Pentecost. And so we will be celebrating Easter uh, for the next uh, uh, 40 days or so. Uh, and it's the day that we celebrate the gift of the, the Holy Spirit at Pentecost that gives the birth to the church. Now, we're going to look at uh, some passages in John today that uh, are controversial or uh, people have kind of puzzled about. Uh, we know that the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost, but there's this uh, breathing of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. Uh, the apostles, uh, the disciples and followers of Jesus were all really brave, and uh, right after that first resurrection Sunday, they were out and about. No, they were locked behind doors. And I, I think about the world that we live in today, and there are many people trying to hide away from the culture in which we live. Uh, the Easter season is more than an extended celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. In the early church, uh, Lent was a season when persons who wished to become Christians were learning how to live the way of Jesus and preparing for baptism on Easter Sunday. It was a time of preparation, a time of fasting and repenting. Uh, it was a time of celebration. You know, Christians have re uh, referred to this time of formation as a catechesis or echoing of the way of Jesus. And the original purpose of the Easter season was to continue the formation of new Christians in the faith. You know, Christians have historically referred to this formation as a process of mystagogy. Uh, it's a leading of people through mysteries. And, uh, you know, as we, we read the Word of God, there are things that we can connect with and we easily understand. And praise God for that. But there is mystery. There are things that we, we might not even uh, fully understand on this side of eternity. But I know uh, personally that uh, through my annual readings of Scripture that every year God opens up and lights up a new light on His Word. Something that I've read year after year after year. And all of a sudden I said, there it is. God is giving us what we need when we need it. So today, uh, this extended season gives us time to rejoice and experience what we mean when we say that Christ is risen and that we as the church are the body of the risen Lord. I, I praise God for this celebration that we have. It's a, a season for focusing on the core doctrines and mysteries of the faith. It's a, an opportunity for preparation for the ministries that the Spirit has empowered us to undertake in Jesus' name. And so as we look at this passage from the Gospel of John, uh, let's uh, back up, uh, look at last week. Uh, we know that Mary Magdalene and the other women were going to the tomb that first uh, resurrection morning uh, to, uh, with the intention of... Uh, uh, further embalming the body of Jesus for burial. Remember, hastily he was put in the grave on Friday because of the Passover. And so they're discussing on the way to the grave, how are they going to move this huge stone that covers the, the tomb? And uh, when they get there, they didn't have to worry about that because the stone had already been removed. And then their problems began to be apparent. Uh, as they went to the tomb, they saw that his body was not there and uh, Mary Magdalene, in great distress, you know, is, is wondering, and uh, she's met by two angels who say, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is risen. And uh, she is just overjoyed when Jesus says her name, Mary. Her eyes are open, and she sees her Lord and Savior, and she is just filled with joy. And what she do? She, she runs to the disciples, right? And they're locked behind the door. They're afraid that what happened to Jesus is going to happen to them. And she gets there and says, we have seen the Lord. He's alive. And they didn't believe her. 
You know, I, I often wondered about that, but unfortunately, I live in a culture now that I tell people he's alive, and they say, no, I don't believe you. And uh, I've had some people that have been bold enough to tell me that I am uh, reading a book of fairy tales, that it's just not true. And, uh, you know, as we look at the disciples, uh, we're going to go now this week to that first Easter evening. And this is what we read in John chapter 20, uh, verses 19 to 31. It says that Jesus appears to his disciples. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. And as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side, and they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. You know, they, they're, they're locked behind doors. Uh, you know, Peter, the brave one, who, who told Jesus, I'll go to the death for you. And then shortly after would deny even knowing him. And they're all afraid that if Jesus, you know, our teacher and our, our Lord, could be put to death, that this could happen to us. And here is the resurrected Lord. He's, the doors are locked, but there he is. He has a physical body. It bears the wounds, but he has a glorified body. And uh, no longer is he prone to the natural conventions of the world that we live in. Uh, doors cannot keep him out. Uh, only hard hearts can, can keep him out today. And uh, the reality is he comes to them and he says, peace be with you. It's the shalom. It is the, the, the peace and wellness. It's the greeting. It's the farewell that they gave in Judaism, shalom. You know, and, and you know, peace of God and the wellness of God be with you. And, uh, you know, Jesus is giving the disciples the assurance that it is him. It, it's, it's me. I'm alive. Here, you touch my hands and touch my side. You believe Believe that I am alive. I have overcome, you know, sin and death. And they needed that. They needed that assurance. They, they needed to, to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I, I, I struggled with it that when uh, the, the, the women were the first to see the resurrected Lord and they go and they, they tell the, the disciples this truth and they don't believe them. And, and I've often wondered how glorious it was for these women to be the first. You know, they were the, the ones that followed Jesus from place to place. They lended support. And they had this awesome privilege of being the first to, to see the reality that there was the Lord and he was alive. That the grave could not hold him. And yet, they just couldn't believe the women and even we know that Peter and John ran to the tomb, right, when they heard this news. And, and John got there first. He outran Peter. Peter looks in and, and goes right in. And, and he walks out and he's scratching his head. Well, what could have happened? Where John believes. You know, John, the younger, he believes. And, and yet there's so much doubt. There's so much fear. And, and I think about the, the world that we live in today that there are so many people that are dealing with fear and doubt when it comes to the things of God, especially to the Son of God. And, and yet we know. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I know that Jesus is Lord, and I know what he's done in my life, and I've seen what he's done in other lives, and I believe. And even though I haven't physically seen him, I've seen him with spiritual eyes in my own life and in the lives of others. And so Jesus, in verse 21, again, he says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. And then he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Boy, this is a, a, a difficult passage of Scripture. Uh, they are being commissioned, and they are, and are given this new life of salvation. He's breathing on them the, the breath of the Holy Spirit. It is that first blessing of the Holy Spirit that we received when we came to Jesus as Savior and Lord. We invite him in our life. We were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They had the assurance of salvation. They had the assurance over sin and death. They had the assurance that they were not only being commissioned, that they were given the opportunity to go out and to share this good news. And they needed the Holy Spirit to be able to do that. They weren't yet equipped, 
but they were commissioned and they were given the assurance that because I live and uh, they have this, they need to go out. And here's the thing. We look at this. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they're not forgiven. Can we forgive sins? No, we can assure people that have received Jesus as Savior and Lord that your sins are forgiven because you've made that public profession of faith. And that's really what's being said here. You know, you as my followers, you have been commissioned to go out and share the good news. And for those that receive it and, and proclaim that Jesus is Lord and Savior, you can give them the assurance their sins are forgiven. If they reject the message, you can assure them that their sins are not. Only God forgives sin, but we as messengers of God uh, can uh, declare to someone, you know, your sins have been forgiven. You know, and uh, to illustrate this, I've had people come to me over the years and say, I can't, I can't forgive myself. You know, I just can't accept that I'm forgiven. And, and I, I ask them, well, you know, have you made a good confession? You know, ha have you truly received Jesus as your Savior? Oh, Yes. I know he's my savior. I said, well, you know what? Your, your sins are forgiven. God's forgiven you. You need to forgive yourself. And Jesus is giving them their commission and their new life of salvation. That is the same new life we receive the day that we receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, that we were baptized with the Holy Spirit. He's giving them the authority to proclaim the good news to assure believers that in Christ their sins are forgiven. So if you struggle with that and you're here today and, and Jesus is your Lord and Savior, your sins are forgiven. You know, there are a lot of people that, that tell me, you know, Padre, uh, you know, go preach that message to someone else. And I don't say it to them, but I can think it. You know, your sins are not forgiven because you do not recognize the Savior of the world. So in verse 24, Jesus appears to Thomas, who wasn't there the, the first time. And uh, it says that one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. And they told him that we've seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound that's in his side. And eight days later, the disciples are together again. At this time, Thomas was with them. And the doors were locked again. They're still behind locked doors. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. And then he said to Thomas, here, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. We haven't seen Jesus with physical eyes, but we believe. But doubt you know what doubt is? Doubt is unbelief. There are people today that, you know, I, you know, I need absolute proof that God exists, that Jesus is real. You know, I need the science behind it. I need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt or I can't believe. You know, if I can't see it or touch it or feel it or, or smell it or any of my senses can't connect with it, I just can't truly believe and, and so they are doubters, they are non-believers, they, they are living in unbelief. But Thomas, having seen the risen Lord, he said, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, you believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And I thought about this. You know, there were a lot of people that were following Jesus from place to place as he was feeding the multitudes, as he was doing these miraculous healings, he was raising the dead. And, and many of those same followers of Jesus stopped following Jesus when he didn't do what they wanted him to do. They wanted him to, to be the, the, the one that would deliver them from the oppression of Rome. And they, they wanted to be able to get out of all the problems that they had and then all of a sudden, this Jesus was not acting the way that they wanted him to, and they rejected him. Now, I've never seen Jesus personally with my eyes, but I've been walking with him for a long, long time, and, and I know this for sure. If your focus is on the world around you and your own personal need to, uh, to wanting what you want and when you want it and how you want it, that you're going to miss many opportunities to truly see and know the Lord. And... Uh, 
We, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus so that we can avoid the things that hinder the sin that so easily entangles us. And, and you know, blessed are those who haven't seen and yet believe. And, and I've seen it, not physically, but I've seen it in my life. You know, as I think about some of the things that, that I've prayed for over the years. You know, I had a neurologist tell me, you're always going to have to take anti-seizure medications. You're going to always be on this medicine for the rest of your life. And, and I'm just praying, Lord, no. <laughs> you know, I, I need to be delivered from this. And uh, little by little, God delivered me from that. And that was a miracle in my life. And I believe it. And I believe that God did that. And I've seen it in the lives of people that were addicted to drugs and alcohol. And I've seen God pick them up out of the gutter and clean them up and, and polish them for his use. So he desires to, to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, You love him even though you've never seen him. And though you don't see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. And that's... The reward, Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on them. And that was their reward, the salvation of their souls. That was our reward. And see, this is why we open our doors and our hearts and our lives so that people can see and, and they can understand the extent of God's love for them and that this is not a book of fantasies. You know, this is real. It is as real as anything that you've ever understood. You know, there are things that I don't fully understand, but I believe in them. I believe in the power of electricity. I haven't seen it yet, but I have felt its power, and baby, it is strong, let me tell you. Uh, I, I hit a screwdriver against the side of a live socket, and it knocked me across the room. And so I believe that it exists. I didn't see it, but I felt it. You know what? I don't see Jesus, but I feel him in my heart, and he is alive. He is alive today, and because he lives, we too have life and life abundant, and he has a, a purpose for our lives. You see, we need to get our lives right with Christ. We need to be able to get away from all of the distractions of the world and focus on him so that we can live out our purpose. And, and here's the thing. You know, there are so many people that are kept so busy by Satan doing all kinds of other things that they're missing an opportunity to serve the living Lord. They're missing an opportunity to know Jesus with the depths of their heart and uh, with their lives. And they miss it. I was so grateful last Sunday. People just pout in the church. We met new people. We saw old friends. And it was great. And it was marvelous. And, and uh, I'll see them again at Christmas time, some of them. And, uh, and, and I'm grateful. I, I, it's not that I'm ungrateful. It's just that I think, oh, my. You're, you're, you're so in tune with the world that you're missing the blessing of God. It's not about nickels and noses. It's, it's about Christ and him crucified and our desperate need for him because without Christ, we're all lost and without hope. So I pray for them. And I get their names and I write their names down and I pray, God, please bring them back. You know, and I, I don't, hey, go, go anywhere. You know, I'm good with that. And I've always said churches have personalities like people. Find one that matches yours and go there. You know, that's the thing. But I'm convinced that you can't fully love God and embrace Jesus as Savior and Lord if you're disconnected from the body of Christ. It's just not possible. As I've said, as someone said, you know, you, you can be married, but if you're never home, it's, it's not a great marriage. You know, it's the same for us. We need this. This is a, a fueling station for sinners. You know, this is a hospital for saints. We need this. We need this time of proclamation, of the reading of the word, the unfolding of the word. We need this time of fellowship, of the singing the praises. If we don't do this, we uh, grow dim. We get further. And, and Satan will give you plenty of things to occupy your time. And I'm, I'm convinced that he doesn't have any new tricks. You, you know, he only has so many tricks that he does. And, and, and None of us are really the sharpest tools in the shed because we keep falling for his tricks over and over and over again. God help us. You know, I, I, I've said I believe this is the greatest time in the world to be alive with everything that we're dealing with in the Ukraine and this pandemic and 
just the, the struggles that people are facing, and everybody keeps trying to, to fix it by stuffing more of the things of life into their life and hoping that it goes away, and nothing can satisfy apart from that personal relationship of Christ Jesus. So we look at these last two verses, the purpose of the book. Disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones that were recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. You know, the, the disciples, the apostles, saw Jesus do amazing things, but it's not all written in the Bible. But there's enough in there that we can embrace and we can believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the living Son of God, who left the throne room of heaven, put on flesh, and dwelt among us to deliver us from sin and death, to give us one day a, a glorified body. And I proclaimed, and for those of you that have, have been here since I've been here, you, you know uh, my, my hope and, and my prayer, and, and I know it's true because God said it, that, that one day we'll open our eyes, we'll see our Savior face to face, and we'll, we'll gain a glorified body. There'll be no more sin, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more death. That sounds wonderful to me. And it's not fantasy, it's not fairy tale, and I believe it with all my heart, and I'll preach it to anyone that wants to listen to it. Because that's the only hope that you have. If your hope is just in this world, you're going to be disappointed. And so, friends, I'm glad that you could be here today as we, we worship. Let us pray. Father God, we, uh, we thank you for your holy word, a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Just continue to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Surround us in your care as only you can. And we thank you, Father, that we can worship freely, at least at this point. We thank you that we can uh, read your word, we can study it, meditate upon it, and apply it in our lives, that we can freely pray to you and talk to you any time that we want to. Help us to be faithful to listen to your still small voice as you speak truth into our lives. Oh, Father, we pray that you would just enlarge our vision, give us a greater capacity to, to reach out into the communities that we serve, with the grace and the love and the provision of Jesus, because we know it's the only thing that will set people free from all that hinders. And so, Father, we thank you for this time together this day. We ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our closing hymn today is hymn number 562, Be Thou My Vision, 562. Please stand and join me. Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence my love.
Rich heavens, joys, bright heavens, sun. Heart of my own, heart ever befall. Still be my vision, O Lord of all. Amen. If you take anything away from this message today, that was the baptism of the Holy Spirit that gave them the assurance of salvation. Pentecost, God would equip them by the, the baptism with fire and the Spirit of God, enabling them to do even greater things. And the, the, that is an ongoing work of the Holy Spirit, something that we should constantly be asking for of a refilling of the Holy Spirit each and every day. Because to be honest, honest with you, uh, I, I look at my life as a pastor and think there's no way I could do this without God, and I, I need him, and I, I, I'm just a vessel that he can use, and the truth of the matter is God wants to equip each and every one of you, and all you need to do is to, to show up and, and be willing, and he will use you mightily. Keep the Lord always before you. If he is beside you, you cannot be shaken. He will show you the path to life, and in his presence you will discover unending joy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.